Hello and welcome everyone. This is Pam Dunwell with Your Nurse Advocate Consulting. And we are very, very excited to have a special guest with us today. And that's Judy Wright. And I'm going to let her tell you about what she does, an amazing service to help families. And we're going to get right into it. So Judy, please welcome and let us know what your business is and, and what you do and how you serve others. Pam, I'm so grateful to be here today from Chile, Montana, but I guess you have a little warm jacket on too, yes, so it is chilly where you live. Yes, cold in Wisconsin too. <laughs> yeah, I am an author and have written over 20 books on mostly, almost all nonfiction, except for a couple of children's books, but worked a lot in the area of end of life stories. And I'm a personal historian trained as a personal historian. So I, I love to gather stories. I love to compile them. I love to write them. But most of all, my number one thing is I love to encourage people to write their own. And I think that uh, women in our age group, um, you know, 45, 65, a little older, most of us have lived such an amazing life that we want to share that wisdom with our children, and but mostly our children's children, because I've found that our children think, yeah, 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 I already know it. But their children don't. Their children and their children's children's children will be very grateful to hear that. So uh, that's what I do. And I have written a, a number of books about this, but my latest venture and one that I feel much prompting to do is to teach online classes. And the one I'm writing or the one I'm developing right now is um, the art of capturing family stories. And as we go into this holiday period, this is a chance to really gather some of those stories from, from the ancestors, from the elders. And, and even if, if our parents are alive, they can tell us about their parents. So most, most people can get information about their grandparents. And that's something, those stories are priceless. There's an old African saying that says, when an elder dies, without sharing their stories, it's as if a, a library has burned down. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do, kind of in a nutshell, pretty broad, but also teaching people to write their own. Now, how did you, how did you decide that this, or how did you become so passionate about this type of work? You know, Pam, I bet if you think back when you would go for Thanksgiving dinner to grandmas and families uh, around the table of families, most kids would get bored and they'd want to go play outside or they'd want to do whatever. And I would pull my chair up to the table and listen to their stories like this. Wow. And then what happened? Really? Well, tell me where, how come you did that? Or what was that about? And sometimes the the uh, older people would get a little annoyed, but most of them were flattered that there was someone who cared and who wanted to do that. So I had um, written my parents' life stories, had written um, my husband's, which is a wonderful thing. It's called Love Dad, Love, Love Letters. Um, and he he told factual information and then we inset in italics and like he was in the Vietnam War. Hmm. And so he told about being in the Vietnam War, but then in italics, he said, and in retrospect, this is how I feel about war. And so then he would use that as a teaching moment mm -hmm. or in this book. So I've just always been interested in people's stories. I think Everyone has one. Everyone has something they can teach us. And all we have to do is learn how to ask. So then my next question is then, Judy, so then do you actually write stories for others or with your course, are you teaching others to write or a combination of both somehow? You know, I used to. I yeah. used to gather stories and I used to be a ghostwriter. Uh, but it, I... I found out that I was making about 10 cents an hour mm -hmm. doing it that way. But 
when probably the most fun I've ever had in gathering a story is in hospice and end of life stories. And I was part of a group in Montana that um, where they wanted to study quality at life's end. And so they had all of these different task forces doing it. And the one I was on was uh, storytelling or yeah, story gathering. And so we formed a nonprofit and I would go in to hear the end of life stories. And to me, it's true. Everything they're saying is absolutely fact. But to their kids, sometimes they would go, if, if they would try to tell it to their kids, they would say, you know, <clears throat> that really didn't happen. The fish wasn't that big, Dad. It was this big, you know. <laughs> and, and so I love to be able <clears throat> to capture end of life stories and then um, give it to the family. And one, I remember I did it on a Thursday and, you know, I was doing it on my laptop, but now you can just use your phone to do it on a Thursday. And he said, I need five copies. Will you bring them to my funeral? And I said, absolutely. And his funeral was on Saturday. So it was it was just this amazing gift to his family. Yeah, and if we could just take a, a just a, a moment to talk about that a little bit more. I know in... In our society, everything is, everybody's in a rush. Everybody's in a hurry. Nobody takes the time to do these things. Can you share a little bit about why it's important to have these, these legacies, these things documented and recorded? I can. And <clears throat> Pam, I bet you that you have held the hand of some people in the hospital and all they wanted to do was be seen. Mm -hmm. They wanted someone to validate that they were there. And in hospice, one of the things I found is that, and and also with my, we were caregivers for his parents and my parents. And the thing is, people don't fear death. They fear being forgotten. And so uh, in doing this, it, it just kind of says you will always be remembered. You will always be remembered. And you brought up a, a really interesting word that I want to kind of focus on. You um, brought up the word how. And in my courses, I am not teaching you how to write a memoir. Because quite frankly, anything is enough. Mm -hmm. So when you were at the bedside of someone during COVID, and they told you about um, their love for their family and their family couldn't come in and see them in COVID. If you wrote that down and gave that to the family, that's enough. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be Angela's ashes. It doesn't have to be a book. All it really needs to be is something. And so in my courses, I, I stress strongly that I'm not going to teach you how. I'm going to teach you why, and I'm going to teach you what. And so the why is what we're talking about. And the what could be um, like, Pam, tell me about your first car. Or mm -hmm. what car do you remember that makes you smile? Mm -hmm. So what car? what is your first car? Uh, my first car was a Mercury. I don't know if it was 1967. It was... It, it was a beat or so to speak, but it had this big engine in it. And if my parents knew that I used to let the boys drive and they drag race down the street, oh my gosh, I would have had the keys taken away faster than I could have said car. Uh, so, yeah, so that was my first car. But the thing I remember the most is, I don't know if it needed spark. I don't know what it needed, but in the rain, sometimes it would just quit running. And I can remember sometimes as a teenager sitting in the middle of the road in the pouring rain, my car is stalled. It won't start. And people are beeping behind me because oh, yeah. I'm taking up the road. So yes, one little simple question can bring out all of that. And and does that paint a picture in your mind? Do you find oh, yourself right back there in that car? Absolutely. Absolutely. So so what kind of music was playing on the radio? Oh, gosh. Um, I listened to pop 
in the it, that would have been in the in the late 70s so um gosh it could have been anything it could have been simon and garfunkel it could have been you know um bridge over troubled waters it could have been you know so yeah so if you were to write that up uh, that particular memory for your children you would do research on what was popular music in okay. 78 Mm -hmm. And Bridge Over Troubled Water would come up. So it it may not be absolutely accurate that you were listening to Bridge mm -hmm. Over Troubled Water, but mm -hmm. the chances are good that you were. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of people are afraid of writing a memoir because they think, what if I don't have the facts straight? Well, it's your story. And it's what you remember. And if you had brothers and sisters during that time, I bet they would have completely different memories of that car. Mm -hmm. They would have a completely different um, ideas of where you were going and what you were listening to. But that doesn't mean yours is false. That means yours is your story. And they have the right to tell their story. And so sometimes when people are writing um, a family story, I'll suggest to them that they say, this is how I remember the farmhouse, but my brother Tom remembers it differently. Mm -hmm. And, um, or this was my safe space when we were growing up. However, my brother Tom liked to spend hours in the barn. Mm -hmm. because that got him away from family bickering or whatever so so whatever you tell in your story is your story mm -hmm. it doesn't have to run through uh, through anybody's mm -hmm. viewpoint it's it's yours you know and everything you said you know it it sparked a memory for me it'll be um in another week or so, it was just the week before the Friday before Thanksgiving that we lost my sister-in-law oh. and, um, she was, uh, she had cancer. And one of the things that she said in the hospital, when we went to visit her is that she was afraid her grandkids would forget her. Absolutely. And yeah. so when you said that, you know, that really struck a chord with me because that is true. I mean, that was one of the things that she verbalizes. That was one of her biggest fears is that her grandkids wouldn't remember her. And so, Pam, as a, a when if you were taking my class on gathering family stories, what I would recommend to you is that you take a half an hour and you write a love letter to her uh, it's called a legacy letter mm -hmm. and um what you do is you put her picture up in the right hand corner mm -hmm. and then you tell all of the wonderful things that you remember about her mm -hmm. and and you have that copies made of that and you give that to all of her children and her grandchildren that's amazing so judy tell us how do we how do we find out or how do we learn more about your course or or when it will be ready? Okay, and and I'm one of the things that's on my goal today is to figure out more about Facebook pages. But here is a you can friend me. It's Judy Helm Wright, and I don't know if Facebook pages if you need to be my friend in order to be on my pages. I don't um, think you do no, either. no, you can. And what I will do is when we have um, completed the interview and, and the video is done, just to let everybody know, I will have Judy's contact information okay. in the video Thank description you. so that you'll just be able to click and be able to connect with Judy on any way that you feel comfortable. So I will make sure that they have that information. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, Pam. This is this is the part, the uh, creativity in me loves to do these things, the technical part in me, when I think, oh, crap, I know I have to push a button. I just can't remember what button I'm supposed to push. Oh, it's easier to go write another blog post. Mm -hmm. well, and Judy, so this has been amazing. So in kind of wrapping things up, is there anything that we didn't talk about or any question I didn't ask or, or something that you feel 
that is important that we didn't discuss or we didn't touch on before we wrap things up? Just that I teach the the why and the what. And um, Pam, in in looking behind you, in your in mine, I've got lots of artichokes, so that's a whole thing that I write about. But looking behind you, I see a couple of mementos, and um, I would love to encourage you to take one of those things on your shelf and just write the story about it. It's it's five hundred words, mm-hmm. and it will take you probably fifteen minutes. Thank you for that. I, you know, this has been, this has been enlightening. It's been encouraging. And I think more important than anything is to be able to have the insight on to provide these types of uh, letters, you know, to your, your grandchildren and and those grandchildren and great grandchildren that you may not know. I mean, it's, it's part of who we are. It's part of our family and, and they, they deserve to know. Yeah, absolutely. So I just want to thank you so much. This has been a great interview and I can't wait to share it with everyone. So Judy, thank you so much. Thank you. It's so lovely to get to see you and, and to see, uh, see your story behind you, things that, that you value. Well, thank you so much. All right. Take care, everyone. We'll see you next time for another episode. 